Now I've had this part, this is Chuck Dearborn's part, sitting up by the the heating vent and it's been really cold so the heat's been on for 48 hours. The next step on this is going to be I'm going to wet sand that down with thousand grit with Indossa sandpaper and then probably uh, if it warms up a little it is really it's probably 15 16 degrees out there it's really cold get on the final coat of clear now the reason I use thousand grit I've tried over the past in the past I've tried to use rougher grit paper I've tried to use 600 as an example and it yeah I guess you could but then you run a big risk of going through on corners and edges. The thousand grit minimizes that chance that you're going to go through on corners and edges. It also gives enough of a tooth, I think anyway, and a, a lot of people I know that do this kind of painting agree, <clears throat> that you really do. Now this, this is dry in about 48 hours. You do need a mechanical tooth as well as a chemical bond. Because the objective here is to flatten this out. A little just a little bit of soapy water just to get the part as flat as possible and then we're going to put on one final coat of clear and and that should really make this part I, I think just about as nice as you're possibly going to get it it's definitely going to be nicer than when it came from the factory that's for sure they would never put this amount of time into the finish Ferrari doesn't put this much time into the finish what are you talking about but anyway and what's going to be good about this, I should be able to do this in roughly an hour, hour and a half, and then it'll be time to go get miles. So now I want to show this up close and personal if I can without a camera cut. Here's what I'm trying to eliminate. I want to sand it until all these little moon craters are gone. Little moon craters, little imperfections, so that the whole part is pretty much as flat as I can get it and doesn't have any deep sanding scratches and it'll just be a little time consuming not nothing no rocket science here this is mixing concrete now because of the shape of this part basically the flat areas I can do with a with a soft block just to make it a little bit easier And again, if I get down, that's why I put on a, two really thick coats first, because I want to be able to get down to where I have a nice, uh, a nice amount of material on there that I can do the block sanding. And the way to do this as, as efficiently as I know, either by hand or with a soft block, because on this there really are no flat areas. Everything has a curve to it. And the only real caution here is I don't want to, I don't want to, as an example, go through on the edges. If I do, I have to touch it up. But you can see now just this one area here, this, this has come up pretty good. Now I'll move on to another little area. It's just, this, this is just a time consuming part of the job. Now what can happen if you don't wait long enough or if, for instance, if we left this part in the garage for two days, well, what would happen, it, it'd take a week to get to this relative hardness of the paint. Because we put it up by the heating vent, it did it in 48 hours. And again, if it's summertime and you can put this part, the two things you never want to do, do not part the, put the part out in the sun, especially if it's black. You'll tend to get bubbles in the paint. You want it to be warm, but you don't want to have it 150 degrees to where the paint blisters. Or in some cases, what happens, you just lose the the lamination between the coats and I've put stuff out in the sun thinking oh boy this will be great this part will dry in an hour <laughs> what you do is it just you run the risk of having that bubble in the paint so I'm gonna keep at this the point is that at this point in time you just have to be patient it just this is time consuming if you go to rougher grits it'll go a little quicker but then you run the risk that you're gonna go, again go through the edges and if you go through then you have to do a little touch up and we like to do this kind of work as if time doesn't exist. It's like when a chef makes a real good pierogi. It's as if time doesn't exist. But we're sneaking up on, let me get another paper towel. We're sneaking up on 
The next couple of days are supposed to be riding days. Now we just went through three or four days it was under 20 degrees and they're predicting it's going to go into the 50s tomorrow and the next day. So I'd like to get this part with the last coat of clear, get out in the garage and the next day bring it in here and this part will be drying while I'm riding. Now this is a good way to tell if your paint is ready for the sanding operation. When you're done with a part of it sanding, run, rub your finger on that. This is, a, this is a great little test you can do if you tend to be impatient. When the paint is too soft, what will happen is you'll see little spots of chewing gum on here. It looks like white chewing gum and they don't come off with the water. If they come off with the water, like this just did, you can rinse them off. That means the paint is pretty much ready for the next step, the sanding, and if you're going to recoat. Now the last step on this is I'm just going around and detailing out all the little corners and edges. Again, I probably will go through on the edge in a couple of spots, and if I do, I'll just have to touch it up with a little spritz of black. But I want to have that edge nice because that's where the paint would tend if you were to hit that with a, a handlebar or a cable or something. That's where the paint would tend to chip. And then the final thing here, using thousand grit is just to go over the whole part. I'll dry it up, clean paper towels, prep saw it, tack rag it, and hopefully we'll be ready to go. And what's really nice, Karen was just down here with a cup of coffee for me and she said it's it's warming up. It's at least 20 degrees out there now, so you never know when it's your lucky day. Every day, to be honest, every day is our lucky day. I want to make sure I get any trace of fingerprints off of this. Any spots I have to touch up, I want to touch them up and I want to get that it really does look pretty nice out there. Karen was right. And I'll tack rag this down because I'm doing a last coat of clear. Certainly never hurts to do that. But. Well, the next step on that is going to be just let it sit out here and dry for a, in the sun for a few seconds. Get it out into the garage for 24 hours and then up by a heating vent for 48 hours. I think that's really going to be nice. I'm looking at it from every angle. And I always say the thing about any new paint, the way I, I test it, is I want to be able to watch TV in the paint. And I think I can do that. Boy, it's just turned out to be another spectacular, spectacular winter day. And who, I would never have guessed. Now, I'm not going to get to ride today because we're going to go get the baby. But tomorrow, I got two days in a row to ride. I don't even know what bike I want to ride. I'm so excited. The part is drying up really nice. Chuck, I really think you're going to be happy with that. And now we got to move on to that tank, figure out what you're going to do about cleaning that tank up so I can paint it and uh, what else, whatever else we have to do to get it ready. But, boy, what a day. What a day to be a painter. What a day to be a babysitter. And it's, it's off to the school to get the baby. Those are motorcycle batteries, Miles. Those are extra batteries. Oh. See, like we charge the battery up, it's like we charge you up. And we just plug you into the Miles charger and charge you up. No, don't do that. Don't. That, they're not toys. Those are batteries for the motorcycle. So when I go for a ride, I have a nice battery that's all charged up. 
You know what? I have eight more in a garage. I have 11 batteries all together. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I'm an amazing guy, right? How amazing am I? Not that amazing, right? <laughs> you want to help me charge your batteries today? Are you sure? Or should we just charge your battery up? Eight, nine, ten, eight, what? Can you count to 11? Yes. Count to One, 11? Two, three, four, <coughs> or are you just going to count with coughs? Cough two, cough three, cough four, cough five, cough six, cough seven, cough eight, cough nine, cough ten, cough eleven. A turnadactyl. A turnadactyl? That looks a lot like Luciano there. What are you doing making a picture of Luciano? No. What is that? Let me see what you're doing. You can saw blades on him. Like is it going to be a dinosaur? No, it's going to be something. He looks mean. It's going to be something like Splitter. Like Splitter. Oh, with the saw blade on the back. Such talent. Such talent. I can't tell I can't wait till we can restore motorcycles together. Look at that talent. Wow, we could paint Grandpa Wendy's motorcycle like that. We could paint Chuck's motorcycle like that. I bet Chuck would like that. <laughs> this is the best in the world.